One of my favorite things about the Splatoon series is that all the characters featured in the game are inspired by real-world marine animals. Some of the species are confirmed by Nintendo, while others are not, so I've done my best to piece together which animals inspired which character based on Splatoon wiki, fan theories, and official statements. Today, we're talking about the Deep Sea Metro, which is a part of Splatoon 2's Octo Expansion. I remember back when that first trailer came out, I was amazed at how cool all those deep sea creatures in the background looked. The thing about the deep ocean is it's a harsh environment with cold temperatures, low light conditions, and very high pressure levels. A lot of the animals look very bizarre and otherworldly because they have all these weird adaptations to live in that specific environment. So let's start off with sea cucumber. Okay, maybe this guy wasn't the most creatively named character, but I happen to love his design. Obviously, this was based on a sea cucumber, which belonged to a group of animals called echinoderms, which includes the sea stars and sea urchins as well. Splatoon Wiki describes that sea cucumber is likely a sea pig, which live in the deep sea and have larger tube feet than other sea cucumbers. This explains why CQ has these leg-like features that can be seen extending into all those weird positions at the beginning of the Octo Expansion level. Levels. Real sea pigs hold their shape by inflating themselves with water. CQ must have found another way, although he does appear kinda deflated sometimes. Sea pigs are scavengers that help the ecosystem by contributing to nutrient cycling. Next, let's talk about Isopadre, our wise and friendly bug man who gives us super cool gear. Isopadre is a giant isopod which look kind of like terrestrial pill bugs, but they live in the deep ocean and can grow to a length of two and a half feet. Whoa, why are they so big? Scientists aren't sure, but one guess is that their size helps them withstand the pressure of the deep ocean. They have four sets of jaws and long antennae that are used for sensing their environment, both physically and chemically. They can't see all that well in the deep ocean. Maybe that's why Isopadre wears sunglasses. He doesn't need to see since his other senses are so keen. Next, let's take a look at some of those other unnamed characters that you can find on different lines of the deep sea metro. First, there's the blobfish, which is infamous for being named the world's ugliest animal. Aw, poor guy. The most famous blobfish specimen, which this guy was clearly modeled after, is found at the Australian Museum, and they call him Mr. Blobby. Despite being known for their ugliness, the blobfish actually looks a little more normal when they're two to 4,000 feet deep in the ocean, because the extreme pressure levels give their body more structure. When brought to the surface, they just become, well, that. Oh, and their jello-y bodies are actually less dense than water, which allows them to stay afloat without a swim bladder, the inflated organ that most fish need to swim. Moving on to these things, predatory tunicates. It blew my mind when I first learned this, but humans are actually more closely related to these things than they are to other marine invertebrates like crabs, sea stars, you know, things with legs and eyes and features we can relate to in any way. Turns out tunicates are part of the phylum Chordata, which also contains the vertebrates. Because despite these things looking nothing like us, they have a notochord, which is like a precursor to a backbone. And here in biology land, backbones are really important for distinguishing groups of animals. Tunicates are really weird, you guys. They can look like so many different things. This, this, even this? Now, most tunicates are filter feeders, but as the name suggests, these ones are predators. If you think it just looks like a mouth on a stalk, you're basically right. These things will open and close to catch any small crustaceans floating by. Next, we have the ping pong sea sponge. Sponges are animals belonging to the phylum Porifera, referring to the many pores that allow water to flow through the animal, bringing in water and nutrients and carrying out waste. They're generally considered some of the simplest multicellular animals. The spheres on this ping pong sponge are actually a predatory mechanism. Each sphere is covered in tiny, tiny barbed hooks, similar to Velcro. These hooks are used to catch prey and slowly digest them. Did you catch that, Agent 8? I'd suggest you, uh, stay off the hook? Pretty gruesome, honestly, for these fashionable bookworms seen in Splatoon. Next, we have the gulper eels. I have to say, these are the scariest looking creatures on this list. 
in my honest opinion. What makes them unique is they have a mouth that's so much larger than the rest of their body, and it can use this mouth to swallow bigger animals. Gulper eels are also called pelican eels because, similarly to the pelican, their bottom jaw is like a pouch that they can use to store food. They also have tails that are bioluminescent, meaning they glow in the dark. The eels use these light-up tails to lure fish into their gigantic mouth. Moving right along, we have the flashlight fish. Named after the glowing patch beneath their eyes, they can thank their bioluminescent bacteria friends for that ability. And it's more than just a convenient way to see in the dark. These animals are able to give off certain signals by blinking their light up patch, kind of like Morse code. They may change their blinking pattern to confuse predators or keep their lights on when they're trying to detect prey. But this mechanism is still being studied by scientists to fully understand it. Up next, these guys. So I've seen some disagreement on the internet about this one. Some people identify it as a lantern shark or a goblin shark, and it's not explicitly stated on the Squid Research Lab Tumblr account. So I'm just gonna go with the species that's currently listed on the Splatoon wiki, which is the long snout dogfish. This is a deep sea shark with an unusually long snout. The characters in the deep sea metro have their snout folded down. And according to the Squid Research Lab, they are tired businessmen who sleep with their eyes open similarly to sharks in real life. Next, let's take a look at these guys, sea angels. Sea angels are a type of sea slug, which is kind of like a snail without a shell, so it's just the soft, squishy body. They use these wing-like feet to move around in the water actually kind of graceful. They're called sea angels because their shape looks similar to snow angels. They're semi-transparent, allowing you to see those internal organs, which is kind of creepy, but also kind of pretty. Unlike how they're depicted in the deep sea metro, these guys are actually tiny, with the largest species growing to only five centimeters long. Last but not least, say hello to the siphonophores. These are related to jellyfish and sea anemones. Similarly to these animals, they use stinging cells to stun their prey. Unlike the rest of the deep sea metro creatures, the siphonophores are actually a colony of animals. All those little heads are their own organism. However, they all work together as if they were one single animal. Just like our bodies have different organs for different functions, different individuals in the siphonophore colony play different roles like catching prey, digesting food, and reproducing. And the colonies are actually pretty big compared to the other animals on this list, reaching several meters in length. And there we have it. Honestly, I'm really impressed with the amount of research the Splatoon developers must have done to incorporate all these incredibly interesting deep sea creatures into the Octo expansion. It really adds a lot to the world of this game, and also to the overall dark, creepy feel of Agent 8's story. I do want to say I've used the Splatoon wiki as a guide for classifying these animals, so I want to thank the contributors to this wiki, who must be just as nerdy as I am to spend their time figuring out exactly what all these animals are. That's it for my video today. Please Please do leave a comment with which of these creatures is your favorite, and like the video if you'd like to see more videos like this. Thank you for watching, and stay fresh!